Hello everyone, it's Lit Lessons with GCS Memes here, once again looking at Macbeth with you, but today we are going to be looking at Macbeth from a contextual standpoint. So we're going to be looking at the history behind this play, look at the top 10 most historically interesting things that were occurring during when Macbeth was set and written, um, and then making some revision notes on those ready to talk about them uh, where we might need to in an examination. Now I like to keep my videos below 10 minutes wherever I possibly can. I like my revision videos to be short, snappy. So you may need to pause the different pieces of context I go through to make your detailed notes. Okay, so please do that if you need me to slow down a little bit. Okay, but without further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's have a look at context piece number one. The context piece number one was the fact that Shakespeare borrowed um, Macbeth from a real historical character in the ten hundreds, and like the fictional Macbeth we see in Shakespeare, he was king of Scotland as well in ten forty to ten fifty seven, and like the fictional Macbeth, the real Macbeth actually did kill Duncan the first, but actually in a battle rather than stabbing him in a bedroom. So this was quite a common thing for Shakespeare to do, to rewrite historical events in order to create his plays. He quite often used historical events as inspiration for his plots, and that certainly seems to be the case here. So that's context piece number one. Context piece number two, then, is the fact that he was writing Shakespeare a play to please the king. Now, James I was a Scottish king coming down to rule in England, and Scotland and England have been warring for centuries uh, by this moment in time, so that would have made him a very unpopular king in England. But what Shakespeare did was he set Macbeth in Scotland as a way of trying to appease the English people and to try and show them uh, what Scottish lands and Scottish people were like. And the fact that he did this was a way to try and please his new employer and king to show them he was supporting him uh, in his new venture as king of England but also as a way of trying to advocate better English and Scottish relations if we look at the end of the uh, play we actually see England help Scotland overthrow Macbeth and return the um, throne to its normality as well as this James I himself was known to be an author and a lover of literature. So the fact that Shakespeare is writing a play that is especially suited to someone like James I would have made him incredibly popular with the king um, and also showed once again his support for this lover of arts king who was now taking over the throne in England. So that's context piece number two. Context piece number three then is the fact that Shakespeare once again trying to make himself popular with King James I um, he made one of King James I's um, relatives Banquo very positive in the play so for those of you who don't know when the witches say to Banquo your sons will be kings what they're actually um, referring to is the fact that King James I will be in power and be a king because Banquo, the real life Banquo, is actually an ancestor of King James I. Okay, so they are actually making a correct prediction there, and the audience would be well aware of that. And the fact that Banquo comes across as one of the most positive characters in the play is obviously, once again, showing Shakespeare wanting to please the king, but also um, showing Shakespeare wanting to portray the king's family in a positive light to the audience members watching. So that's context piece number three. Context piece number four then is what are the main reasons why murder of a king is included in the play and that's because of this belief of the divine right of kings. Now there, um, Macduff here says that um, the murder of a king is sacrilegious and that's because there was a belief during the time that God sent kings to earth to help rule over our lands. And this is the reason why, even nowadays, treason is seen as the worst and most serious of crimes, because you're essentially rejecting God's will and gift. Now, King James I, being a quite unpopular king in England um, when he first came down 
to um, rule, was a huge supporter of this belief, likely because he wanted his people to believe in this so that he was himself protected from their plots against him. So that's context piece number four. Context five then is linked to the Divine Right of Kings, certainly, because it's the idea of the gunpowder plot, probably the most famous example of treason in English history. Um, and basically the gunpowder plot, for those of you who don't know, was a group of Catholics who were trying to kill King James I by blowing up Parliament. And the idea of plotting to kill a Scottish king therefore bears huge resemblance to the action of Macbeth. And it would be um, foolish of us not to talk about this in an examination because it certainly influenced this play. Without the gunpowder plot, Macbeth's plot would be very, very different. Okay, The action of the play would perhaps not have gone this way at all. So that's context piece number five. Context piece number six, then, Okay, is the reason why witches are used in the play. And it's because James I, okay, a very important figure when it comes to context for Macbeth, actually wrote a book called Demonology. Because he was very, very interested in dark magic. And this was a non-fiction piece that he wrote, which basically taught readers about demons, witches, ghosts, um, all things that were influenced by the witch trials he saw while he was just King of Scotland. And Shakespeare definitely read this. He actually included some of the quotes and rituals from this book in Macbeth, the play. So it's a really good thing to mention that for context six. Context seven, then is the strange events that occurred after the play was first performed. Now, this play, when it was first performed, was thought to be cursed by witches, angry at the way they were portrayed and the fact that some of their rituals were included in a play. The reason people thought it was cursed is because there was a lot of bad luck that occurred after the first performances. Okay, One of, um, one of the actors who played... Uh, the Lady Macbeth on stage actually died and Shakespeare had to finish the play as Lady Macbeth. As well as this, someone who was playing Duncan was actually stabbed by a real knife rather than a prop knife and died too. And for this reason many actors will now avoid saying the name of the play, they call it the Scottish play instead when talking about it and very rarely quote the witch's spells unless they're performing because they themselves are worried about becoming cursed. So that's context piece number seven. Context piece number eight, then, okay, is this word here, patriarchal society. Now, a patriarchal society is one where men have ultimate power over women. It's obviously, therefore, very good for us to discuss it when we think about Lady Macbeth. There were very strict rules and roles expected of women during this time. They were expected to be hostesses, mothers, daughters, and wives. So for someone like Lady Macbeth to show so much power and domineerance over the character of Macbeth makes her incredibly atypical. And you should use that word quite regularly within uh, your exams if you have to talk about Lady Macbeth as a result of that. Okay. Now, Unsex Me Here is a very good speech for you to look at regarding that. I've got a YouTube video on that, so do check that out. Okay, because essentially there she's rejecting her role as a woman and she's asking to be more masculine because at that point in time they believed that men had a very different constitution medically which meant they were more decisive and strong under pressure. So that's context piece number eight. Context nine then is who is allowed to perform on stage and its effect. And it was something we call boy actors. Now during that time there was only certain people who were allowed to act on stage, and that was men. Women were not allowed to act on stage, so young boys, or um, boys of sort of the late teenage years, would play the characters of the women. Okay, so when Banquo refers to the witches having beards, it might be uh, that they did have beards on stage, because they were being played by men. And this is because laws made out that women were not allowed to perform on stage it was seen as impure and improper um, but do have a think about how this might unintentionally have made some of the action of the play does this allow lady macbeth to be a serious figure does this allow the witches to be terrifying when they're being played by cross dresses as much 
or does the play become somewhat more like a pantomime where these um, somewhat serious scenes become a little bit more humorous unintentionally that's for you to think about and perhaps mention in your exams so that's context piece number nine the fact that there were boy actors playing female roles context 10 then okay the final one for the day is a medical belief that is relevant a few times in the play and that's something called the four humors now this is linking to the idea of liquids in the body because it was believed that there were four liquids that formulated your physical mental and um, health and your personality um, from a medical standpoint and having different changes of these liquids in the body changed your behavior changed your health as well so Lady Macbeth at one point asks for gall instead of breast milk um, and the reason she asks for this is because she wants to be more deadly she wants to be more ambitious and decisive because it was believed that uh, yellow bile or gall in the body would have made her that way so when um, Lady Macbeth also says that her husband's too full of the liquid milk it perhaps suggests he's weak innocent and womanly and that's because um, it was believed that liquids in the body changed you that way so that's all of the context I'm going to leave this slide ready for you to pause here which basically talks about how you should talk about context in a response I've also given you a bit of an example there so feel free to pause the video here if you want to have a look at this okay these are my top tips on how to write about context to finish today's video as always we finish with a meme and I love a bit of a Spongebob meme as um, you may know from looking at some of my other videos if you do want anything else okay do feel free to write so in the comments part as you can see from this meme here big and most important figure for you to remember and know about is the character or real life figure I should say King James the first because he was a massive influencer behind all the context in this play thank you very much and I'll see you next time